What's up, everybody? This is just Alonso here bringing the brand new video. Today we're going to be discussing how to side against Demise Cleefor. Now, if, you've, if any of you guys remember, way back, way back in the day, I made a video called How to Side Against Cleeforts, and, well, this is kind of similar, except it's going to be a little different. It's going to be a little different. There are a lot of cards that we didn't have then that we do now, so... Without any further ado, let us just jump right into the cards that I think that are going to be most useful when setting against the Cleefor uh, Demise matchup. So first off, we're going to have a massive board clears. We're going to have cards like Holding Legs, Twin Twister, Spell Shattering Arrow, Malevolent Catastrophe, Full House, etc. Uh, these cards are going to be mainly used to get rid of your opponent's uh, back row as well as their scales, which which will which can considerably uh, put you in the lead very very uh, fast. Um, holding legs in particular is very weak considering the fact that it you have the normal set you have to summon this card and um, the fact that it can be very that it can be stopped very easily so next uh, twin, uh, but twin twister is very very good it's straightforward it's very simple uh, so yeah uh, spell shouting arrow I feel like the, I feel like that many people are really really underlooking this card and uh, I'm not really just look uh, looking at this card as as the uh, as a, as a potential that it has. Um, when your opponent has a full f uh, f board of uh, Floodgate and you can't actually do anything, you could just play Spell Shattering Arrow and that would win you, and that would basically win you the game. Because it's it's really good in that, in, that, in that aspect. It's really, really good. It's really simple and it's a very, very good, uh, easy card to use. Um, unlike Full House. Full House, you target two cards uh, face up Spell and Trap on the field and then target th three set ones. So basically, you target your opponent's scales, or you target one one scale, a Necro Valley, or one scale, um, and a Floodgate, or two Floodgates and three spells, etc. You know how this card works. Uh, and then you destroy them, basically. It's basically a miniature Heavy Storm, except, uh, if, except Heavy Storm is a lot better. Um, but all in all, I think that these two are the best cards out of this, out of the uh, mass removal, I guess, with Spell and Traps, so... Next, we have cards that completely eliminate the graveyard for them. Um, for those of you who don't know the pen about the pendulum mechanics uh, uh, downside, I guess, is that um, when uh, they get sent to the extra deck, they are banished instead when, when uh, Dimensional Fissure or uh, Macrocosmos is face up on the field. The reason why this is this is, is because the pendulum mechanics sits that have to be sent to the graveyard beforehand before being sent to the gra extra deck. So therefore, um, Dimensional Fissure and Macrocosmos banish Cleefort Monsters, as well as they banish Draco Vows, which I thought was always going to be a very good side deck card. Um, so, yes. You also have Natural Floodgates, such as uh, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to lump uh, Trap Stun in this because it's basically the same. It does basically the same thing. Uh, Roll to create Anti Spell Fragrance and Denko Seca. Denko Seca is in the monster, so therefore it's not going to be as effective. I'm not saying that that monsters are bad by any means, but cards like Denko Seca, where you have to waste a normal summon in order to use its effect. Uh, very accurately is going to be very uh, um, uh, difficult for you, um, especially considering the fact that uh, that um, it's going to be very difficult for you to even use because um, because they they just might remove it because they can punch it, punch over it because it only has 1700 attack and the average clay fort monster just normal summon by itself can kill it. Um, Anti spell fragrance basically prevents it from playing the game. If you play activate this card on turn one. They can't set up their scales, and therefore they pretty much lose from there from that point forward. They can't set up sacrifice uh, as fast. They have to wait a turn for it. So, it, it, it buy it, it, at the very least it buys you at least one turn. Well, it's create is, is exists simply to get rid of those pesky fl pesky floodgates, um, as always. The same thing goes for um, uh, trap stun. However, trap stun is a bit different. You can actually use this to deactivate the tri the. Uh, the uh, the floodgates so that way you can get in at least a turn to, of of play. It also doesn't uh, stay on the field and it's very hard to get rid of unless they blind MSD it. But then if they even if they blind MSD it, you can just simply flip it up and 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 it as a chain. So next is monster board players, particularly cards like Storming Mirror Force and Drowning Mirror Force, um, but more so uh, Drowning Mirror Force. Um, uh, Storming Mirror Force is very good. Um, the only downside with this card is the fact that uh, if your opponent hasn't actually Pendulum Summon that turn, they can just play it again, and this uh, they just Pendulum Summon 5 again, and then you're stuck with the same scenario. The only difference is that they have to go into main phase 2 for it. Uh, Drowning Mirror Force basically just gets rid of the entire thing. So, for example, if they Pendulum Summon 5 from their hand, which they're not going to do, but in the Dream Scenario where they do that, 
you shuffle their entire hand back into their deck, basically. So it's very good. Um, next, there are monsters that are uh, that are walking floodgates. Cards such as Vanity's Fiend, Dragon, uh, Vanity's Ruler, Jinzo, Spell Canceler. General basic cards that are that are very uh, effective when combating a, a pendulum based deck, um, and, a, and a especially a pendulum based deck that is also very trap heavy. That's why Jinzo is lumped into the, into one of these cards. And I'm gonna somebody. Uh, and I'm gonna consider. Uh, Consider a Thunder King Ryo as part of this uh, part of this group of walking floodgates. Um, uh, these cards, but but these cards in particular are very good in the Monarch deck. And if you could find ways to fit them in your into your de in, into your deck as an average, like for example, if you could fit you could probably fit Spell Canceler very easily, or you could fit or you could fit uh, Jinzo very easily in your Burning Abyss deck, or you could fit it very easily in uh, um, in uh, Cosmos. Um, to stop your opponent from actually uh, activating their cards, then then this card, these cards would be very very seen uh, uh, in your side deck very often. Um, additionally, if you play the cards like Vanity's Fiend and Vanity's Ruler, you're already playing this ca these cards in the uh, in the uh, in the Monarch deck, at least in side deck as as a two of, or in the main deck as a one of. So you're going to play these cards under under uh, under the circumstance that your opponent is playing Cleeforts. So. It, so if you're if you're a Cleeful player, then you have a very better, better access to him. And Jinzo sided, I, th I believe Jinzo sided in, in, in most Monarch matches matchups to begin with. So um, next is cards that basically eliminate hand uh, hand access, basically Thunder King Ryo, Mistaken Arrest, and Mistake. Essentially, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to activate Mistake on on first turn. That way, they can't search out with Scout. Uh, or a sacrifice, and then that's basically half the battle. If they can't search out on turn one, you're probably going to win that game. If they can't activate their scales, if they can't actually do anything with their scales beyond pendulum summoning, then you're probably going to be very, very good for that game. So, next is uh, Cursed Seal of the Forbidden Spell. Um, this card is particularly aimed, uh, or not particularly aimed. This card is actually very good for. Anyone that, that that doesn't really mind discarding a spell card for this card. Um, that being said, this card is very restrictive for that, and it, since uh, the restriction on Curse Seal of Forbidden Spell is kind of structured to be very choking, um, this card might not see as much play. Uh, that being said, if you activate this on, let's say, a Twin Twister or a Helix. They can no longer play those. He they, can, they can no longer play those cards for the rest of the duel, which is good, because that means you. Which that means you don't have to worry about your other other side deck options being wasted by Twin Twister, which is very good. And last card that I thought was 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 kind of a given, and I, and I thought that this card would honestly make make side decks way before um, uh, the pendulum stuff happened, like before Draco House and stuff like that, and that is a vector. Um, people are all honestly undermining this card as a very, very good card as a side deck. Um, sure, it's a monster, and sure, it's also it's also a pendulum monster, which, in theory, if you're not playing a pendulum deck, can be very, very bad. But I don't think so, because it, this card doesn't really do anything to your board because you're not playing a pendulum deck, and it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything, and it does everything against the the, the opposing pendulum player. The reason why this card is particularly wonderful is the fact that you can also, if you're running out of steam, you can simply just summon this card, and it's relatively decent. I mean, 1850 is nothing to scoff at, and it gets over the majority of Klee 4 monsters, unless they're under sacrifice. So, anyway guys, I want to wrap this video up, and I will see you guys in the next video. Tell me what you guys think about these cards, and tell me what, card, what cards do you think I missed in side decking for this deck. And this has been Sithonet, I'm signing out. Later, guys.